Hey guys, welcome to Survivor Live. We are sitting here with the biggest villain, dare I say, of Survivor Kagayan, Cass. Hi, Cass. Hey, man. I think I have a lot to be accountable for because I have been talking a lot of smack about your gameplay and talking a lot of smack about you in my recaps and in the interviews. So I'm here to be honest with you and let you know that I think that you played a good game. I think that, you know, you stood for something, and now I'm here to understand and learn from you what exactly that was. What, what was your strategy? What were you playing for? What were you standing for? My strategy was to play with my gut and to go in and tear it up and be a female player who was not afraid to ruffle people's feathers and do all that craziness. I wanted to play like a man because the women on Survivor in my demographic usually latch on to a Tony and get dragged to the end playing cleanup. I didn't want to be the cleanup batter. Okay. So, and that brain tribe dysfunction junction over there from the beginning, right? Sure, you had a lot to contend with. And on day three, I realized I had no allies because David was voted out. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to everyone individually and said, hey, you know, what can we do? And they all said no. And then I said, it's time to change it up and start playing. And that's when my game really started with that Garrett vote out and, and deciding it's time to take the reins, which I didn't want to do from the beginning. I wanted to get to the merge and then start doing stuff. But with me, it was kill or be killed. So did you feel like you were a free agent the whole time that you were playing? Or were you um, ever in part of an alliance? Well, when I flipped to the brawn, or the when I flipped at the merge, mm -hmm. I wanted, I had a vision to be the last brain standing with two brawn. What, I, why? I thought it would make a great story. I knew Tasha and Spencer were much more likable than me. Mm -hmm. I, I know who I am. I know I'm an introverted person who is so inside her own head and assumes everybody thinks like me, and that's not true. Right. It, it's a huge fault in life. Right. Um, so I knew I couldn't go there with Spencer and Tasha. They're just too likable. So did you know that before you were going to turn on Tasha? Because it looked like when Tasha was sitting down with Sarah, and Sarah was like, I'm in charge. I'm the power player. I got, I'm the president. You know, I'm going to make this move. And you're like, oh, no, you're not. Because, I mean, it looked to me that you were just power hungry and, and that you wanted to be in charge. But did you really feel like I'm on the bottom, I'm on the outside, because Tasha was appeasing Sarah? What, give me some insight on well, that. Well, a lot was going on there. Okay, Spencer and Sarah were inseparable. You know, the sleeping stuff at night, all those things tell. So when the when uh, we all okay. mixed and I'm on the outs of that six, there was never a Tasha Morgan me alliance. Do you think Morgan would ever align with me? You know, like it didn't appear, I, so did it. I, and that's what Tasha claimed. Mm -hmm. The logical, if you're going to have revisionism, you should have said Spencer, Tasha, Cass, not Morgan. And then. You know, Sarah had, was getting tight with the boys. I wasn't going to get tight with Tasha and Morgan. And Tasha was gravitating towards Morgan and Sarah. You could see her body language in that clip when she literally turned her back and then said, then vote Cass. That, to me, and I actually went for a walk down the beach with her after that. Because we went on our little walks every day. And right, we were pretty yeah, tight. Yeah. And I said, what's up with that? What are we going to do if Sarah doesn't do this? Mm -hmm. And she looked at me and said, Cass, I have a plan B and a plan C, and you should come up with one too. And I said, well, am I in those plans? And she said, you got to play how you got to play. So she didn't so, make you feel comfortable? No, she said, I'm looking out for me, and you should too. Okay. Additionally, I don't want to be your goat. Everyone there saying, I was going to take Cass to the end as my goat. Do you think that you could have made a strong case for yourself at the end? I think I could have. I don't know. This was a bitter, bitter jury. You know, I think, see, I, got, I think that's why Wu didn't end up taking you to the end, or one of the reasons was because you are so articulate and you're so smart, and I think you would have been able to actually plead a case for yourself that would have swayed a few votes your way, if not the majority. Which yeah. is all you need, right? I well, mean, you don't have to win by a landslide. You know the Ponderosa vote that they do before final tribal, like Cass, if Cass would have gone? If Cass would have gone, everyone said they wouldn't have voted for you anyway. Well, at Ponderosa, four, four people said they would vote for me. And they told me I would just have had to convince one person. And I think you I probably could. could have. No one there knew I was an attorney. They thought I was this crazy animal handler. Yeah, why 
did you not tell anyone that you're an attorney? Why be an animal handler? Well, I am an animal handler. I, I saw the photo I of the reindeer. You, that I'm, you know, I, I know everybody <laughs> thinks I lie about I'm like, I do live off the grid. I am an animal handler. Okay, I, I you're mean, also a lawyer. I am a lawyer. Okay. And I am a parent, and my daughter's initials are on our team flag. No other parents are. So, and how do your daughters feel about your gameplay and how the reaction has been from fans and, and people on the well, street? Well, I have a, a six-year-old, so she doesn't, she doesn't like Survivor. I oh, live in okay. a small town. People literally like go to my car and wait for me at this grocery store to get a picture. So oh, it's great. very so it's uh, intrusive. Well, not when you're with a six-year-old, because they're with mom. They're not okay. with Survivor cast. Uh, you know, I'm not a horrible person. I coach kids basketball. I work at the school. I We had a huge premiere party with a fundraiser where we raised money for low-income sports through Parks and Rec. We could see the human side of you when your husband came to the island. You, you were very humanized. It was such a cute moment where you like got teary-eyed and you were like, I'm like, where are my devil horns? I'm supposed to be evil. It was very sweet to see that because then you kind of dropped your guard and it's I don't know if you were playing the same way that Tony says he was playing that he put on a role and he played Tony in the game and then when he's home he doesn't play that way and we saw the toll it took on Tony it looked pretty serious so were you playing a role out there or is that you that is me when I'm at battle I I don't live in a war but when I go to court when I believe in something, I'm all in. And it's not, and I was there to win and, and to do it ever how I could. I wasn't there to be the mom or the best friend. We were all gonna turn on each other. And I was personable with people. That, that flip with Sarah just poisoned a lot. And there's been a lot of revisionism since then. And that's fine. I think it's very hard for people to look at me who everyone, underestimated that I would do things and I went around and did them but the Sarah well, vote yeah, yeah and I mean it was like oh you flipped off Trish after she was voted out and that was unnecessary well let me put a little perspective there Trish uh, harassed someone to the point where they thought they were gonna hit her and quit the game so Trish used that charm on me for several hours that afternoon and she went way below the belt so we only saw a small piece of that fight. Yes. Okay. And I do not regret that bird. I'm a person. And if you insult my family, you're going to get that or okay. worse. So she was coming after your family. Well, Did you give it back to her on the island? Was there some stuff that we didn't see as far as you coming back at Trish? I did not. I let her sit there and treat me like a punching bag that whole time. Because I knew what was going to go down that night. Mm -hmm. And I wanted those men. She was making everyone uncomfortable, just going after me so aggressively. Even Tony was like, hey, back off, Trish. Yeah. Um, and Spencer tried to get in, and it, it, it was unreasonable. It looked like you and Tony bonded out there, too. Like the odd couple, you and Tony. Tony and I Where were both playing from? very hard. You know, I know <laughs> okay. you, people say, oh, Cass is emotional. There's nothing emotional. I didn't want Morgan out. I never wanted Morgan out. I wanted Tasha out. Tony's the one who picked Morgan. Mm. I went with Sarah because I knew she was gunning for me. She's admitted to me. Yeah, Cass, you were on the bottom. Uh, and I knew that Braun tribe had cracks. You had, two, you had two big alpha males over there with LJ and Tony. I knew they were going to crack right so there was a guaranteed crack in that alliance coming my way and I'm the new person so I can work in so how chaotic is your life since Survivor because you've nicknamed yourself chaos Cass. well Has that followed you uh no I mean I don't run around calling myself chaos Cass. you don't uh, try to just cause problems and stir no, people up no I don't hashtag myself each other because sometimes it's hard coming back into real life and re-entering and being able to separate, like you said, the game versus real life or battle versus reality. Yeah, I mean, I came home very quickly to home life. School's in, everybody's at work, life is going on. Yeah. Um, I was relieved to be done with the game. I was pretty sick. I actually lost 22 pounds out there. I'm not uh -huh. a very big person. Um, so that was like a fifth of my body weight. And it was hard, just like Tony was saying, it was really hard to gain back the weight. Um, so did you do a special diet? Have you been working out? I ate a lot of Pop-Tarts and um, <laughs> ice cream and, you know. The all-American diet. 
<laughs> That's all you talk about. I've never I had a Pop-Tart Pop -Tart. in my life. And they talked about them out there incessantly. Are you serious? So, I, was, so I got home, I took my daughter to the store and bought every flavor of Pop-Tart. Oh my gosh. And a birthday cake and four gallons of ice cream. Well, you're really teaching her well now. And that was dinner. <laughs> she was like, I like this, mommy. <laughs> She's like, go back on the island yeah, and come back. That's anytime. what she said. <laughs> was your husband so happy to have you back? My husband was so proud when he came out there that I was there in the final four. And, um, you worked that challenge. Did you think you had any chance of winning? They you should have stuck up there. They should have shown the time lapse. It was like 15 minutes of you like trying to get the rope out of off, got, untied off the thing. It got stuck once, and I got it off by jerking the this thing that was attached to. The next time, it was it was on there so tight, I couldn't get it off. And when we had climbed on the platform, there was actually a bar up there to help us get up there. And the, then it was gone. And then it was gone. So my husband's yelling, climb down the ladder. And I get, I climb down. And then I'm like, how am I going to get back on this little kitchen tile thing? <laughs> and I, <laughs> Are you afraid of heights? Yes, okay. definitely. I don't, yeah. And um, I don't know. I mean, I really, having my husband there, you heard him. He was cheering me on the whole time. Jeff had written me out. He told me that. He said, I never in Survivor do I write, you know, very rarely do I write a contestant completely off. He's in his head, he said he was thinking, how am I going to get Cass off this pole and make the story complete? Yeah. And he says, next thing you know, you're leaping into the ocean and then you get the puzzle in like very quickly. Did you just surprise yourself there? No, I was good at the puzzles. If I could get to the puzzle, you like, knew you had it. Yeah, even Spencer, he did the slide puzzle well. Um, but that one where we had the team challenge uh, to go to the school, I guided Spencer through that whole puzzle. Oh, yeah, that's right. You um, were his backup. And when we did the maze thing, mm -hmm. we're, Spencer and I worked really well together. And Tasha. If the three of us were on something, we could do it as a team. Mm -hmm. But we just, we were three individuals out there. Yeah. And, and we were never together from the start. You know, everyone was fraction. You know, right. It, it, there was no real bonding. The Brains Tribe was a rough pull. Were you able to bond with anyone out there? Because it just really didn't seem like you connected with anyone, except for maybe Tony towards the end. Well, Tony and I went for walks every morning. We were the first people up always. Um, and we would walk down and check fish traps and stuff and talk. Uh, Tasha and I talked. We mended that fence. But she did not speak to me for six days out there, which is a lifetime in Survivor. Oh, yeah. And it's a bad gameplay. After you flipped yeah. on her. Yeah, she was pretty upset about that. Right. And, Real fired up. And the thing is, it's Survivor. It, you play it by the day, right? By the hour sometimes. You by the don't, second sometime. Yeah, you don't uh, flip someone off till they're walking off the set. But right? then they are going to be on the jury. That's what I was thinking. Because at that point, Cass, you are still in the running to be in the finals. So you don't want to <clears> flip <throat> someone off who you just got voted out in front of all the other jury members. Hey, I'm the first to admit, I I was, you know, socially unaware, as everyone <laughs> says. Uh, am so I what? capable of a social game? I don't think it's going to be my strong point. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know who I am. Uh, I have close friends. I have a tight circle. I'm very loyal to the people I'm loyal to. Mm -hmm. But those weren't the people on Survivor. And I didn't click right out of the gate with anyone. You had Jatia and Tasha tight yeah and you had uh spencer and garrett very tight and then i had david but i didn't feel a bond necessarily mm -hmm. other than we were both the old people with kids because um, he was the first person gone so you don't really want to bond with that one right so <laughs> i was kind of out there without an in so were you surprised at how far you did make it in the game no and the only time i was ever nervous of having my have being voted out was the night trish went home i actually was like maybe the boys are going to play me uh, and not do mm -hmm. what was planned. That was the only time I knew Wu was going to take Tony. Cause you he, did I, at the final. Did you see me? I didn't even look surprised. I just Wu is a wonderful person. He has a truly good heart. He has integrity. I, I think he's a great guy. Do you think Tony got in his head though that he was basically? It sounded like Tony was the one who planted the entire argument that Wu made to the jury. Like Tony told Wu what to say, and Wu said it. Yeah. Do you agree? I think the last person to get to Wu is going to get their way. Yeah. 
And you saw the turmoil in his face. Like, he couldn't even, he was like, let's just vote. That was the shortest tribal council ever. He was so nervous and looking at the ground. And I was like, oh, my God, we was giving away a million bucks. And I honestly wanted him to take me so I would have a shot. Yeah. But I also, if you were going to have a good cop, bad cop thing going, I, I would rather have Wu, you know, be saved as this altruistic guy. Sure. Um, I knew Tony would demolish him in and, a final two. But he's two. still, like, he maintained his integrity. He can still use that. That's his platform. And, you know, he kept that intact. So that's yeah. Good thing. He's, a, he's a great guy. and um, He's so, so lovable. If you would have seen him at that school with those kids, I mean. I watched on the show and I was like, you just fell right in love with Wu. That was I the said it on TV. I'm yeah, like, I like, fell in love with Wu. I he's mean, so he's adorable. so quiet at camp and out there he gets up there and does all these things and the kids and he's playing basketball with them and so cute and uh spencer and i are just shoveling spencer's our like, faces ah these little monsters get uh, out of here he didn't <laughs> he didn't mean it in a bad way he was nervous to be sworn when we pulled up and all those kids were out there spencer was like what I do i do <laughs> Cass? and i'm like just hand stuff out and smile <laughs> just relax it's okay get out he's tw- you know, okay he's- i have one more question we're gonna have to wrap it up i'm so sorry um okay Here's here's a little scenario. I am Tasha, and you made it to the finals. I just like tear into you and to call you disloyal and a horrible person. What is your argument? Where, where what do you say to get my vote? How did I play differently than Tony? Other than not having idols and allies, I made it there because I played and I made decisions in the game. I would say Tasha. You missed six days of this game. You can't sit out six games. And six days is six games in this, in Survivor. You know, I feel like the women were especially harsh, hard to me, harsh on me because it's unconventional to have someone like me go on and play like that. Uh, I stand by my game and there's no way I would have gotten there without the flip at, at the merge. All right. Um, well, you know. congratulations. Making Final Four is a huge feat, so I hope you are very proud of yourself. And now we will let you go and enjoy the party. Oh, I hope so. Thank you, All Cass. Right, for- Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.